Hi everyone and welcome to this, vid uh, this video tutorial on handling missing data in time series using linear interpolation. In this video, I will guide you through the process of using linear interpolation to view the missing values uh, in a time series dataset. Okay, uh, in the previous videos, I have um, ex ex exploited eh, or explored different ways or methodologies or approaches or now to handle missing values in this data. So we have discussed on how to use mean imputation, uh, multiple imputation, and so many methods. But uh, in this video now, I will now focus on interpretation, met uh, interpretation method and linear and the time series data. Now, what is this do we call linear interpretation method? Now, actually, this is just a straightforward technique that assumes a linear relationship between adjacent and missing observations. Now, the first uh, step that you need to take is just to write the data. And now I have already done that. And you, if you want to run on out to import um, time series data to this data, I mean time, uh, what, sorry, uh, Excel data to data, watch my previous videos and you'll be able to do it, uh, to run that. Now, this is my time series data, and you can see I have uh, here, and right, then I have the dependent variable, and the independent variables here are x1, x2, x3, x4. So what defines this data is a, a time series data is what we call the time, the time what, the time variable, which is here, you can see it's from the year 2000 and uh, to, from 2007 to 2020. Now, uh, as you can see, we have some missing values here. So you next to x3, x4. So it will be wrong for you uh, to start. Uh, what can I say? Uh, to start um, handling uh, these missing values with, and maybe by reading them or by x, what by mean imputation or multiple imputation. So it will be wrong. Now, there are some factors that you need to consider before you do anything. Now, I know in my previous videos, I have just explored a different uh, data, uh, the different data types, eh? but that's one actually is just for you to understand on how to use these uh, methods. But in this, I'm going to um, tell you everything that you need to understand before you use any method. Now, this is a time series data, and how do you know that? Remember, in a time series data, there are trends. So, for you to, to do that, I am going to set this data as a time series first, first of all. Uh, so, I'll go to time series, then set the data to declare this. So, I'm going to declare time variable we have here is here, we, and just, just here, and press OK. So at this point, this data is set as time series. And how do you know that? So if I'm going to have a time series line, yes, line, let us say we have variable y, and just like that. So I'm going to have a time series plot. So, and remember in time series, we normally focus on trends, patterns, and so on. Yeah, good. So you can see this is a time series plot. From there, you can see this how it how it goes. This is now what you call the trend, and it's the most important thing in time series data. So the mistake that many people make is that they, when they see a uh, missing values or missing data in uh, in any data, they may be rush to use any method, any affordable method that they can get, but they don't consider what type of data is this. Is this a cross-sectional data, is this a longitudinal data or what? So in this case, if you are going to use more computation in this data, then you are going to encounter some problem. There are some issues, there are some uh, things that you are going to to do what? To uh, actually you are going to interfere with the patterns and the end of this. Now, let me give you an explanation of this. Why not missing? why not mini substitution okay many people they say they can say now instead of multiple mutation let me use mean substitution so why not mean substitution or multiple mutation in time series data 
Now, main substitution actually is an approach of uh, to handling missing data, to handling missing data uh, in a time series, but it may not always be the best option. Main substitution involves so you can see it as an ex a nice explanation here. It involves replacing missing values with the mean of a variable data. While it is it's a simple method, it has some limitation and a potential drawbacks. Now, what are these limitations or potential drawbacks? Now, I have to, actually I have just illustrated three of them. So these are the three main drawbacks of using mean substitution in a time series data. Number one, we have rows of variability. Now, by using the mean to fill the missing to fill in missing values, you are essentially assuming that the missing values are average or typical values. This approach disregards and underlying any underlying trends, patterns, or seasonality in the data, leading to loss of variability. I think now this is the main thing. So, if you do that, imagine now we have this kind of data, and now you want to uh, to do what? To substitute this with the mean, the mean substitution of the non-missing. So now you are assuming that this is uh, this kind of missing value is just an average or an n typical value. So that's going to be wrong. Now, now that's the main reason as to why we uh, we don't encourage you to use mean substitution on a time series data. Number two, we have impact on statistical measures. Viewing in missing values. Uh, missing values with the mean can affect various statistical measures such as mean, valence, and correlation. This impact leads to distorted results and inaccurate inference, which is true. It's just straightforward. And the last um, drawback is autocorrelation disruption. Time series data often exhibit autocorrelation, meaning that the values are dependent on previous values. So, main substitution can disrupt this autocorrelation structure, potentially sorting the time series pattern and making it difficult to analyze or model the data accurately. Nice, wow. So, you see, those these are the three drawbacks of main substitution. And this, with this, I can give you an advice that we don't don't uh, use main substitution in time series data. This is what will be affected. And now, the pattern and the trend is this. So if you are going to use mean substitution, then it means you are going to interrupt this kind of uh, pattern that we have uh, we have already in this time series plot. So you need to be careful um, about what about that. Now, how can we perform? Let us move forward and uh, perform the mean uh, the, 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 the what the linear substitution. So we are assuming this data actually is just linear. So uh, I can just assume and they do just a simple regression a uh, regression then y and x1 we have x2 so if we do that we we'll just have a nice um a nice re linear regression model you can be able to see that where y is our dependent variable x1 x2 they are just uh, independent variable so in this case we don't focus on the significance of the variables as you can see this b value scale and 0 0.05 uh, see, but now we are going to focus on uh, what we're going to focus actually this data is just for uh, for what for demonstration eh? so it's not that uh, accurate but so we are going to not um, to rely much on this interpretation of the results no so let us move forward and uh, tell you on now to perform this uh, linear interpretation so what do we do so first step declare the data as time series with which i have already done uh, and now this is the first step. The one declare data as time series. Nice. As time series, eh? So in this I have already done already done that, but I can just give you the code and uh, this is easier. Now the second step now is to next now we will use the hybrid command instead of to perform the linear interpretation. This command replaces the missing values with interpreted values based on a linear relationship between adjacent and unmissing observations nice so what i'm going to do is just to use hybrid command and as a subset this command will, um, will use this command to perform the linear interpretation uh, interpretation sorry this command replaces the missing values with interpreted values based on a linear relationship between adjacent and unmissing observations so after doing that, 
uh, I'll just key in my my what um the, my data with missing values but this one now you are going to do it in independent if you have 10 variables now you're going to do this 10 times and so on so we will start with actually um i i want to start with them um, i to do this to demonstrate this with x4 alone because this one has more missing values so i'm going to use x4 to interpret x4 so i'll just key in x4 then you have to include the time period uh, that's here time followed by me here then comma generate so we are going to generate a new variable now let us call it new underscore x4 and then approach finish with the now what we are doing here is that we are going to generate a new variable by the name new x4 and this variable is actually uh, a linear a linear operated so it goes, that's why we include this uh, the time here so that we maintain that trend so after doing that i just highlight and execute nice so if you were here we don't have an error now let us move to our data nice 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 so this is our new data you see this this was our previous variable and now this is our new variable so what you see actually it has maintained this an uh, missing variable that's just maintained them but now for the non missing it has just i uh, uh interpreted generally interpreted it as you can see we have 4.960 so you can see something that is uh purely linearly you see nine nine one two one five one eight two zero two zero two three two six you see something linearly now this one is linearly interpreted now let's go to i want to do a time series plot for new for new variable i'll go to this and say the s line the new underscore x4 and just like that perfect so you see in this we still have that kind of a uh, trend you see we have maintained that kind of trend, and now this word is supposed to be encouraged in this so i think uh, i have done what i wanted to do uh, i mean i've demonstrated what i wanted to demonstrate to you so you just this for example so if you want to do for the x2 as well you can just move here to this code and uh, just copy this um enter control v go to x2 generate a new variable x2 just like that and they highlight this and they execute it's the same same thing so if you go to data you'll be able to have a new regenerated data which is linearly interpreted so after doing all this to your uh, missing variables or mi variables with missing data you can be able to remove the, you can drop these variables from the data so i can now decide now let me drop um what let me drop variable drop x2 and x4 just like that so you drop them so if i drop them now it means in my data i'll be having a data which is common so actually drop x3 as well so let me do this or be i put it that's as well uh, x3 just like that and here is x3 so i'll just execute this and uh, drop x3 as well drop x3 so after doing that execute nice so if i go to my data now i'll be having my new generated data you can see no missing values and for those missing values i have in, in what done what i've replaced them with a um, uh, linear interpolation method i've used linear interpolation methods and now from this you can save your data so with this and the save your data there is a save this is a, a complete bridge data dot dta just like that so i go to this save save command now i'll save my data so if i go to my folder you see i'll be able to have that data which is complete now and i'll use this data in what in any analysis 
so i think up to this moment you have found something new and it's my free my free advice is that uh, whenever you have any missing uh, data don't be rushed to use any kind of method just wait a kind of method the, the, the methods that we have see the drawbacks and see the time of data that you have so that at the end of the day you'll have uh, a data which is um and which which you have filled with and you have fixed and missing values and method but that at the end we you are achieving your your objective which is an under one an accurate result and so on so you need to do that now in this tutorial uh, i walk uh, through the process of using linear interpolation in theta to one missing data in time series by sorting the data set performing interpolation using uh, a bread command so you can see we have achieved our our, our objective and i think up to this point you have found something new i hope you found this tutorial help thank you for watching and please if you're new to this uh, channel uh, consider to subscribe and if you need and um, i know so far i have a list of um, things to do uh, from you from you guys and if you feel like you need me to to do a video on any topic just uh, let me know in the comment and i'll be able to do that thank you see you next time